Good morning. Today is Friday the 17th of April. On this day in history, in 1521, the trial of Martin Luther of his teaching uh, begins in what's called the Assembly of the Diet of Worms. Um, when I was younger, I used to think that was a, literally a diet of worms, but diet means assembly and worms was the place. In 1951, the Peak District becomes the UK's first national park. In 1971, the People's Republic of Bangladesh is formed. A few happy birthdays. James Last, the uh, composer and band leader, it's his birthday, as it is Nick Hornby, the English novelist. It's also the birthday of Bethan Gibb Reed, the not as well known, but uh, dear to me, my daughter in law, who's a um, uh, Riding Lights uh, Theatre Company administrator. And also tomorrow, and just in advance, because it's a Friday and tomorrow's Saturday, when we'll take a a break till Monday but tomorrow the 18th is the Reverend Tim Cobham's 50th birthday yes he's 50 years old some of you thought he already was some of you thought he was a long way away but happy birthday to particularly to Beth and, and Tim um, just an interesting mo note today is evacuation day in Syria which celebrates the recognition of the independence of Syria from France in 1946 well let us pray shall we before we turn to God's Word Lord, we pray it will be a real blessed day for Bethan and tomorrow for Tim. Lord, on these birthdays in this challenging time, we pray that our hearts will turn to you. And Lord, they will know a real sense of closeness today, tomorrow and all days. As we turn to your word, we ask for that closeness as we draw close to you, that we'll hear you speaking, Lord, and they will know your light and love bringing radiance to us in whichever place we find ourselves today. Amen. Turn with me, if you can, to Mark chapter 4, and we continue looking at the parable of the sower. Yesterday I read it and really talked much about the principles of parables and what and how they are, have got an insider-outsider narrative, and they invite us in, and they teach us something about the kingdom of God in many different ways. But I didn't really delve into much about the parable itself. It's the only parable we find where Jesus gives a full explanation to his disciples. So let's read it shall we and unpack it together in a short time sign of verse 10 then he that is jesus was alone when he was alone the 12 and the others around him asked him about the parables he told them the secret of the kingdom of god has been given to you but to those on the outside everything is said in parables so that they may ever be seeing but never perceiving, and ever hearing, but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. When Jesus said to them, then he said to them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like the seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they only, only last a short time. When trouble or persecution comes along because of the world, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seed sown along the, among the thorns, hear the word. But the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things come along and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like the seed sown on a good crop, hear the word, accept it and produce a crop 30, 60, even 100 times what was sown. Sometimes we call this the parable of the sower but you could also call it the parable of the seed or the parable of the soil depending which way you look at it for example on one particular point you can see that it's a parable of the soil it depends on how people choose to receive it which i think is a good way of looking at it another aspect is perhaps the parable of the sower which focuses on the work of god the word of god being spread even to the unreachable places like why would a sower sow in such an irresponsible way about scattering seed on hard rocky places well the word of god goes to all those people and is open to all even if they don't accept it 
or perhaps it's a par parable focusing on the seed, the gospel itself, which tirelessly preached to everyone, but not everyone receives and some people reject it. There's many different angles to this. But when Jesus comes to this in verses uh, 10 to 12, he gives this purpose of the parable. It has this insider, outsider kind of view. There are those on the outside who hear, but because of their lack of belief, lack of their faith, particularly in Jesus, don't re really hear what its true meaning is. And there's those on the inside who, because of their faith in Jesus, they come to some revelation of understanding of what this means. It doesn't mean to say that insiders know every nuance. And it's interesting that the disciples themselves at this point don't really truly quite get it. And that's why I really like the disciples' response because it helps you and me. Because sometimes, if we're honest, sometimes we find things that God says we don't quite always get it. Well, Jesus gives this hint of slight frustration with them. Do you, do you not understand in verse 13? And then begins to explain it in much more detail. And we can learn things in about four different receptions to this message, if you like, four different aspects to the seed. First of all, in verse 15, it falls on hard ground, ground which is pressed down hard, so much so that the soil doesn't really penetrate it. And it is spiritual dynamic that Jesus talks about, where Satan quickly snatches it away. I think we have to be aware that there is a spiritual battle. The enemy doesn't want us to hear God's word. We need to be praying for other people and even praying for ourselves that we would be hear it and, and the enemy wouldn't get chance to steal that away. The second thing in verse 16 to 17 was about uh, the hindrance of persecution and trials, the rocky ground. This would have been particularly relevant to the very first readers of Mark's gospel who we think could have been Christians in Rome, people who were facing persecution and trials for following Jesus. And there's an example that the danger is that with no root, as soon as the sun comes up, they get scorched. In Hosea 6 verse 4, it says, like the morning mist, like the early dew that disappears. Oh, that we would, uh, persecutions and trials won't do that. Sadly, the persecutions and trials of our day, of this circumstance, can cause some people to drift as they get scorched by the challenges of isolation being alone. The next group is the thorny ground in verses 18 to 19. People who hear and accept, initially with great enthusiasm, and it's sure progress, but somehow it's crowded out. Crowded about their worries. The worries of, are perhaps crowded out by wealth. I find this quite an interesting kind of parallel. We often think of people be full of anxiety and strains of this life causing a distraction, but also have to be acknowledged that the wealth of this world causes unequal distraction. Sometimes we are choked by circumstances, fear, anxiety. Sometimes we're choked by distraction, where we're so absorbed with gaining materially, it distracts us from the one who truly provides and seeing that the wealth that we have of this world is only momentary. What about the good ground? Well, it's those who openly accept the word of God, openly accept Jesus and his kingdom. The word sinks, sinks into the heart and the, the fruitfulness is apparent when they reap a great harvest multiple times over. And this is for, I think there's a lesson for us that we can hear that there's a great harvest in our lives for those who put our faith and trust in Jesus. In Matthew 7, 16, Jesus says, by their fruit, you will recognize them. And people who are following and accepting God's word, welcoming to the kingdom, have a fruitfulness, not of worldly wealth, no, but a fruitfulness in their walk with God, which endures. My prayer is that you'll know that fruitfulness as you accept God's word, particularly in this season that we're in. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your teaching. The parable of these words. Lord, there's things in it you want us to grasp which are beyond ourselves. Help us to hear what you're saying. Help us to not just be people who hear but receive in. And there's a fruitfulness spiritually, a fruitfulness of godly spiritual fruit in our lives, of love, care, compassion, kindness, patience, self-control, goodness, and the many of us. Lord, let it be a fruitful day, Lord, in life of Bethan, tomorrow for Tim, and all of us, that we will be people who receive and hear your word, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray you have a blessed day. Keep looking to Jesus.